Hello, I'm Claire Hollis and this is one of our videos for Women's History Month. Women make up 50% of the population and I challenge you that we should do a better job of representing them in our history lessons. One of the key ways that women are already included in many of our curriculums is by looking at the role they played during World War I. We might be used to talking about women's experience in munitions factories, as nurses, and we often connect this period to women's fight for the vote. The story I'm going to tell you today may help you to communicate the fact that for many women, this period was only the start of the story. Margaret Partridge, who you can see in the photo on the screen on the right, was born in Devon in 1891. She benefited from some of the early strides made in women's education, going to Bedford College in London, which was one of the first higher education colleges set up for women in the UK. By the time Margaret graduated in 1914 for a degree in mathematics, it had become affiliated to the University of London. After a brief spell as a teacher, Margaret applied to join a firm of engineers in 1917, and she quickly found herself supervising the construction of searchlights, of X-ray machines, and beginning to design her own electric engines. Unfortunately for Margaret, along with so many other women who also took up the opportunities made available to them in wartime, once peace was declared, things changed. Whether due to unofficial pressure or due to the passage of the 1919 Pre-War Practices Act, which rendered women ineligible for many of the roles they'd played during the war, Nearly one million women found themselves out of work by 1920, and Margaret was one of them. She was, however, undaunted. She returned to Devon and set herself up as a self-employed country house lighting engineer, helping people in the countryside wire their houses for, elect for electricity. By 1927, she had set up her home with her partner and fellow engineer, Margaret Rabatham, you can see in the photo on the screen on the left. She'd also become the first woman to wire an entire English village for electric light. And she'd only just begun. Margaret electrified several villages across Devon and also the town of Beckles in Suffolk. She built power plants, laid cables and installed street lighting. Between 1919 and 1930, the number of homes wired up to the national grid increased from 6% to 67%. And Margaret was one of the people making sure that at least some of these houses were outside of the big cities. Margaret may not have wanted a career as a teacher, but she still made sure that her knowledge was passed on. Throughout her career, she employed many female apprentices who went on to have careers as engineers themselves. Back in 1919, she'd also been a founder member of the Women's Engineering Society, which was dedicated to ensuring that women were able to play a role in this profession. She became its president in 1943. In the World War II, after women became, became conscripted into auxiliary roles in the war effort after 1941, Margaret found that her expertise was called upon by various large employers who wanted her to help them work with this new female workforce. Even after she'd retired, Margaret still couldn't quite slow down. After she'd, after she'd moved to the village of Willand in Devon, she heard that the village hall needed rewiring. She therefore assembled the local women's institute and taught them all how to do this themselves. Margaret Partridge died in 1967 well known within engineering circles as a pioneer, but perhaps with little wider acclaim. However, in, 19, in 2019, a plaque was set up, which you can see on the screen here, um, outside the house that she and Margaret Rabatham shared for the duration of their lives, commemorating Margaret Partridge as a pioneer for women in engineering, but also of electricity in the countryside. So what can Margaret's story tell us and how can we use it? Well, Margaret's story can help us tell the story of women's work beyond World War I, showing how many women who joined the workforce during the conflict struggled to stay in it after the war ended and were often forced to be creative in their careers. It also tells us about the ways in which some women, like Margaret Rabatham and Margaret Partridge, were able to share their lives with each other. Finally, 
Margaret's story also forms part of a bigger picture of social and technological change in the early 20th century. As lights flicked on and opportunities opened up, even in places that you might not expect them to have done. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>